Mr. John, to start this session. Kindly be seated, sir. Respected uh, dignitaries, ICT, ACT team, my co-panelists, <coughs> teachers, students, and my co-professionals. I'm extremely thankful to the ICT, AT, ACT team for giving me an opportunity to share my views with respect to the industry perspective of how we can bring in a culture of innovation. Let me start with like what is innovation as such first. So you have probably a uh, little bit you have to understand that what exactly is a uh, invention and the innovation and what the industry is looking at for and why exactly we are working on, on in the industry in that angle. So first let me start with uh, yeah, invention. Invention is something which is creating something totally new. Take for example, you have a phonogram, phonograph for that matter. Or you take in the industry which I come from, the tire industry, when you make tire, First, inventing from a typical solid wheel to a tire, to a pressurized thing, probably may be an invention. Or a wheel may be an invention. So what is innovation then? Then th that is thinking creatively about something that already exists, but it's a significant or breakthrough improvement. What comes from what we have, and from that what we can do something totally great. It can be a product or it can be a process or it can be even services, something new, which is not totally new. If it's totally new, it's an invention. And if it is something which is already existing, but the improvement takes you to the next plane, then it's a innovation. That's what we describe, at least internally in our organization. So in both times, a word called creativity comes in. So then what called? What is creativity? Creativity is a ability to think and act in ways that are new or totally novel. So, so unless you are creative, probably you cannot invent or you cannot innovate. That's what I do. So from this base, let me take my another 10 minutes to share my views of what exactly happening in the industry. So what, why, why in the industry is so particular about innovation, what you are talking about, there are a lot of changes it has been taking place from early 90s when we, when the geographical boundaries were removed or it, things were open, the economy became much open. So the protection went off. So what really happened in the industry was that, that technology invariably, if you ask me, in most of the Indian companies, we have collaboration. So we invariably collaborate with the, the leaders or in the West, invariably, or some few Japanese company, companies, and then we produce product. That was the scene you know, before 1991. What happened after 1991, gradually the, the duties became less, the goods started moving from one country to another country much more freely. So the situation started in no more the technology is available by the technology provider or nobody is willing to share. If at all they share, there will be a gap. So we will never get the latest technology. That was the situation we had gone into the industry. So the Indian industry had to innovate. They had to do something at par. So unless we are technologically at par or better, it is very difficult to survive. So it is more of survival of the fittest. So if we have the right technology, right processes, of course we do have the advantage of our skillful employees, but that is insufficient. That is one of the major factors which pushed us into. The second major thing was the resource scarcity. So when the resources are scarce, 
invariably we have to find an alternate way these two factors primarily pushed for more innovation in the in the manufacturing organization from there if you if you take where we stand probably as as india where we stand with respect to the innovation we stand for example if you go back to the the global innovation index 2014 article 15 is said to be published i suppose so we stand as india in the 76th position mostly first lot say first 25 positions are mostly by the western countries and only two inclusion is is singapore and japan in the asian side and even china is also is well ahead of us doesn't mean that we need to worry but what i'm trying to say is that's a concern but definitely together we can meet it so that word comes in very frequently it's been spoken in manufacturing and our sector is how should india be whether india should be the germany of the east which is technologically superior more technology comes from there a lot of automation you have to be like that or china of the west so whether you should be more of manufacture at lower cost if you ask me we are also a bit confused what should we be but china unfortunately or fortunately uh, you know me unfortunately uh, india is lagging behind in both the cases incidentally so where do you feel is in my opinion is we need a blend of innovation and we should not focus on our efficiency in manufacturing or the cost of manufacturing so together probably will help us to uh, you know make the make in india more successful then now let me look at the five points which i want to share how to bring in a culture so is, is the pace okay i suppose in another 6 7 minutes i will complete <clears throat> the first point what i feel you know i say i had to change the points based on the audience so what i feel what we can get from this audience i have changed the first priority of the points and first point i talk about the the current education system it was touched upon by few of the speakers before and i acknowledge that the need is felt so today what what happens so once again going back to the report and uh, and uh, the the global innovation index we stand 24th with respect to the knowledge absorption so our 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 people in general our students have the capability to absorb the knowledge or what we teach that's a positive point the other side what exactly is happening is as we insist more and more of you know that the theory and less of thinking i think we have a serious issue in the organization going back why i'm saying so is in late 90s and early 2000 i used to go for the campus uh, campus selection when you talk to the students invariably if you ask a basic law they will reproduce beautifully and moment we say if you ask them how this works or what a why there's a gearbox in an automobile and the way they explain will be very difficult or the important points they miss what i'm i'm not trying to conclude that all the students are like that i think it's it's unfair in doing that what i'm saying is the conversion of science into engineering is the role the engineering colleges play and are we doing it are we doing it in the way the industry expects is to be is to be you know thought about see coming to the education once again the immediate thing comes up is the input what you get like with the people who are entering into engineering colleges or used to that culture what shall we do but somewhere you have to make a make a choice we have to convert that into an into an application what will you do to do this is primarily one part i want to uh, really uh, request is when a engineering students take for example come for a project in the in the college or the first time we are getting them into the project into, into the college and doing a project it takes two months or three months to try a project invariably the knowledge he has is insufficient to take up a project so invariably that is incomplete 
it's okay, it's incomplete, but we also do not complete all our projects in two months or three months, so it's fine. That stops there, another guy comes in. It starts from the beginning, so it invariably stops in the same place where he left. So that guy comes in, invariably stops, little more and that. So what happens in the industry is, we get a little bit uncomfortable, the things are not moving, he's taking the sh same shape, primarily because every time a new guy comes in. So what my, what my request to the faculty or to the team here is to think, can there be a nodal faculty help each and every project or with an industry so that their continuity is, continuity is maintained? So where you left, you have to start from there and if you complete any complex project or any complex innovation takes time. Lot of failures, you have to learn from the failure, do a next step, come back, probably may end up doing the same way. So that part is definitely missing. So instead of pushing students, we invite faculty to work with the industry. It is possible so we can maintain the continuity. That's one of the major drawback that why innovation does not happen from the students coming to the place. And also when, they, when the students come to my system, so in fact we had a very interesting discussion with one of the Japanese car manufacturers some time back. They have a gurukul. The gurukul is primarily uh, to, to develop the guys who are coming fresh to the industry to become usable or to start giving the right output from the industry. That's a basic uh, purpose. So I was asking him, are you having the similar gurukul across all your aut you know, automobile manufacturing plants? He said, no, 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 no. It's only in India and one or two developing countries. So why in India? Then his immediate response was, the people come with a the concept, they do not know application. Very simple, in a very simple word. We are teaching them how to apply their mind into the work. So how to make them think. So this part, which they are supposed to learn from the engineering colleges, the industry is putting the input. So to make an innovation, it takes time. So for them to understand, it almost takes two years for a fresher to work and then try to really bring in improvement or any innovation for that matter. That is purely the system what you need to work. Then coming to the point two, it is almost relevant or I mean it's an extension of the point one, is the, is the application of science. So how the entire system works in? Here does a research, first, the first part of the thing, which they give the findings or scientific truth. Then there's a schooling system which teaches the science to the students. Then comes to the engineering colleges. You are training the science based on the science. You are training the students to apply the science. And we guys in the industry make meaning out of the application, try put, produce in mass production and make a business and sell it to the end customer. So end to end if you ask me, that's a natural invention or what, what you know, the science that we have the end customer at the end. So unless you link both and understand that there is a science, application of science, and that's a business which is producing in mass and make the things viable for the, for the mankind. In the entire thing, you are in the sense, the education institutions play a major role of converting science into application. Are we doing the right thing? Are you training our people on the right thing or do apply the science? or we are generating people for the next level. Please look at it. Why I'm saying this again and again is, fortunately I have an opportunity to uh, be part of the academic panel of one of the, one of the college, engineering college. So when I sit in the thing, I know what, what is required from the typical manufacturing industry. I'm not talking about the, the digital part of it, typical manufacturing industry. So, uh, so when I sit there and then go through the thing, that's how the way the entire thinking is going on is, how to make the guy do a post-graduation and all the input is given to the guy to the post-graduation. So what all is required for a post-graduation, actually we are pushing in. Fine, very good, thank you. So okay, the guy comes to post-graduation. What do you do there? You will see that the guy is given enough input so that he can still go for a PhD. Okay, very good, excellent. What he does after PhD, invariably lands back to the college and some research institute may be very negligible. So what exactly happens? You have forgotten your customer in the process. So we have a customer is asking, mean, another interesting factor is, if 100 guys complete engineering, 80 guys invariably lands up in the industry. Of course, IT has a major role of consuming them or giving them the opportunity. 
and they do not for higher education. 20% goes to higher education and another, another maybe 2%, 3% ends up in PhD. The entire system is, doesn't work. You are not looking at the customer who are using it and then we are messing it up. I am not against the thing like you are doing a great job with respect to you know, shaping up for the next level. But what the industry requires, where it ends up finally is totally different. So please look at it that this will help to bring in the right type of innovation. My suggestion will be to bring in the innovation culture Every project or every year, they have to be trained with respect to how they apply that knowledge, how they apply the science to make uh, engineering matters or application works. Even if the failure, we have to literally, you know, support him. Okay, that's my, my point too. So first we talked about education system. Second one, application of science to engineering. The third one is, it's also been pointed out by few speakers before. I'll just take another two minutes, I think bear with me. Uh, no, they're rewarding the attempt and not the result. Okay, so the poor guys, when they come for the project, I used to see the first two months or three months, they'll be very slow like anyone else. I think I, I understand. We also were like that. Last one week, we have to look at the amount of effort he put in because if the project is not successful, his faculty will not give the right mark. So I would rather tell him, we know, we know that we have this guy has really put in effort. Even if it's last one week, you can see how much of our employee puts in and how much that your students are putting in. And even if he fails, I will rate him the highest. If he has really found out something, this method will not work. It's a, it's a learning for us. That is important to us. So if he puts in, definitely the guy has done his job and it's a great thing. It, it, no, it, it, it only started only now. I can go back to my engineering college days. And we used to, one, one of my friends tried, tried to put a square drill. So, you know, you know it's how difficult it is to put a square drill in a MS plate. It is very difficult. So he tried and he made a oval drill. Okay, so I would say that excellent job in that level of two years or three years of engineering uh, education and guy making attempt and try to make a oval. I mean, a square unfortunately became oval, that's fine. But ultimately, he ended up having a name that his name is Nagaraj and we call him as a square Nagaraj. So it has become a, you know, kind of making fun of the entire thing and, and obviously his efforts were not appreciated. Moving to the industry, when I see how to make a square in a, in a MS plate, it's not that easy. And people are working for years and years together on making a square drill on a thing like it is, it's not that easy. That's a different process available, but in a drilling machine making a square is not, it's not that easy. So what I'm saying, please look at if your guy is really bright and trying to do something and try to support him. And whatever the failures, whatever are done, Please document them and showcase it so that people will start from where they left. So that also the, the thing can do. So the third point, the fourth point is, you no, know, like uh, uh, <clears throat> you know the industry institute interaction. Okay, so which is the ground rule for the any innovative things to happen. Let me once again take an example from uh, uh, from. Uh, a yeah, German example. See, that's an institute called, I'm not an advertiser of that institute incidentally, so don't take that thing. thing. So Fraunhofer is an institute. Primarily what they are doing is, it's very, very similar, I would say, that a lot of similarity between, you know, uh, ICT, ACT kind of approach. But the en entire Fraunhofer team is full of the best in the world class expertise in this team. So take for example, if I have a, you know, doubt on the process, and in the in entire industry, I can go to them and tell them I have this problem and they will do the research, they will, they will understand and go back to the, you know, the education institution where they provide a lot of laboratory facilities and come back to me and give a technology. I think that part is definitely not to the extent what is expected of in a manufacturing industry. So more, most of that innovation possibilities or significant improvement possibilities coming through in another agency which is between the industry and the institution is not that matured in here. Probably if ICT, ACT develops into a, such a huge expertise and then say that any problem you tell me, I will guide you. So that's the thing. It may come up in the future, but today it is not to the extent which is in, a, in the developed countries. And that's one of the area where definitely that will help us to bring in the innovation culture. And the last one, uh, you know, I thought, I thought I think should, uh, uh, we should tell how to convert the ideas into uh, the reality. 
so take for example, um, see in a typical industry what happens is we generate whatever is not able to solve, we call as a problem bank. Okay, the one bank which is always full of, it is packed is the problem bank. So I have never seen in my life that the problem bank reduces. So what I'm saying is always there's a huge opportunities in the industry that unsolved problems are plenty. So we call for ideas. So ideas come, generate, come flow like uh, the thing. It comes. In fact, we used to get those more than 1,500 ideas in a month. So what really happens is we are not able to really you know, screen them properly and then try to select out of it. So invariably, the guy who is giving the idea and the, the person or the industry which it receives, that's, that's a system for doing that is improper, inadequate, I would say. So what we do is we generate from the problem bank, these are all the problems I have. So we, we throw the problems. Please give ideas in the aspect so that we can grab that. So it works, but what happens the next stage is converting that ideas into the implementable you know, solutions, it is really taking longer time and which, which subsides or which brings down the real motivation of uh, you know, the, the innovation. Okay, so the five things what I talked about education system, it talked about application of science, then rewarding the, rewarding the failures, industry institute interaction, and finally about processing the ideas. The five points which help us to improve the things like. Coming to the last one minute. So how the industry does. Let me give one example and then, and, and then close it. Okay, so I worked with an MNC, uh, it's an American company. So how do they do is, like it is, it is supposed to be very famous for innovation. So what do they do? It is, it is fundamentally like any other organization or any other Indian companies do, gather all the suggestions. So it will come, it's a huge. So we call us a, then call us a gates. That's a gate one, gate two, gate three. They have around six gates of screening. So it's the gates of screening, that's a lot of institutes they get into. So take for example, most of the education institutions, it comes in, like the way you are given the innovation award, probably that will be panelist. So that's a, this is one time, but that's a continuous. So gate one will pass through this, gate two will pass through this, gate three, each gate has its own criteria, so I'm not elaborating that. So it comes out, it has a thousand ideas comes in, around 10 comes through all the six gates. Each gate is a, uh, it's a output. Then coming back to, you know, the how do they do that further? Then we have feasibility studies. So from the 10 ideas, we'll first go through the technical feasibility, whether it's technically in the mass scale, can you produce? Okay, that comes in. Number two, when it comes, passes through that, then it comes in with respect to, will it have an environmental impact? It will be okay. So it is okay, it passes through. Then can it make it a commercially viable? My cost and the customer will be able to relate. Yes, it is possible. Then do the first trial feasibility. So they do. So what I'm trying to say is, when you talk about innovation, behind the innovation, there's a lot of other activities goes off. It's not like throw idea and it works in. Throw an idea, process it properly, and then do it, probably it may, it may definitely will work. So with all this, if you're able to bring in a, in, I mean, a culture which a major contribution from the industry works in, I think definitely we can, we can make, make in India will be really successful. So as an industry, what we can offer? I'm not trying to push in from all to your side, but definitely the industry is willing to, willing to get or get more students provided a faculty tells us that I am there, don't worry. We do not want, you know, like a, a person coming in, work for one month, go back, another guy comes in, same job, work for one more month, and we don't have time. So really, if the faculty takes the initiative, and if you guys can guarantee, I think we have the problem bank full. We have enough to experiment, and this will definitely lead to the next level of innovation. So with this, I think my, uh, uh, I complete my, and how we have planned this, 10, 10 minutes will take among the panelists, or a little more, and then we'll try to see whether we can have a summary, if time is available, and take one or two questions from you. That's why we have planned. I know the time is running short, we lost already 15 minutes, and thank you very much uh, for your kind listening.
Thank you so much, Mr. John, for those interesting pointers on innovation.